Hey guys, welcome to Philips Garage. So today we're going to have a look at an iMac, a MacBook and a Mac Mini. And we're going to see how they perform in uh, Adobe, DaVinci, uh, you know, Pro, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, After Effects. Uh, these machines are probably what the majority of users are going to get into when they first start using um, uh, th those applications. So Price-wise, they're all relatively the same. So we're going to have a look at where your money's better spent in that regard. Um, so what we'll do is we'll jump into some specs. We'll have a look at some pricing. We'll run through some synthetic and then some real-world benchmarks for you guys to see which one is the right machine. Okay, so now jumping into the specs of the MacBook Pro 13 inch. It's a late 2015. It's a 2.7 i5 dual core with a Turbo Booster 3.1, 8 gig of RAM. Uh, it's running an Intel Iris graphics at 6100 and it's got the 256 gigabyte flash drive. Uh, the Mac Mini is a late 2014. It's got a 2.6 i5 dual core, a Turbo Booster 3.1, uh, 8 gig of RAM, and it's running just the standard Intel Iris graphics with a 256 gig flash drive also. Uh, and then looking at the iMac, the 21.5 late 2014, it's running a 2.7 i5 quad core, Turbo Boost to 3.2. It's also got a gig of RAM, Intel Iris Pro graphics, and a 256 uh, gigabyte flash drive. Now into the pricing. So looking uh, 1500 US for the MacBook, uh, 900 US for the Mac Mini and 1500 US for the iMac. Um, now, I know I said the pricing is very relative, but if you look at the Mac Mini, you're still going to need to get a screen, a uh, keyboard, and a mouse. So that should bring up the price to relatively even uh, level pegging there. Okay, so here we ran the synthetic benchmarks, and we the first test we ran was Lux Mark III, uh, with the CPU and the iGPU included on the Lux Ball scene. We had the iMac just blow the other two apart by nearly double. Uh, Cinebench R15 on the CPU test, the iMac took the lead there again, uh, obviously due to its quad core performance, but uh, note that it's not that far ahead of the rest. Uh, Cinebench R15 in the OpenGL test, we had the iMac once again take the lead. Uh, in the Heaven GL on the Extreme preset, we had the iMac run at seven frames per second. Uh, still not ideal uh, frame rates, but I guess no dedicated GPU, that's what you get. Uh, and on the Geekbench uh, single and multi-core scores, we had the MacBook Pro take out the best single core performance. Uh, not by much, but it is a little bit better. And then the iMac obviously take the multi-core performance due to its quad core. Okay, now on to the real world benchmarks. Uh, here we ran FCPX, the Bruce X export, and we had the iMac do it in 48 seconds, um, so about 30 seconds faster than the MacBook Pro. Uh, we done DaVinci Resolve, we had two minute red fi file, uh, we graded an effects and we exported it to a H624 in a 1080p. Uh, the iMac took the clear lead here by more than double or more than half the time quicker at 355 and came in second was the MacBook Pro at 7 minutes 20. Um, Premiere Pro we ran uh, grade effects and then we exported it into a YouTube 1080p. Uh, here once again we had the iMac uh, take the lead and I think that's just due to the quad core performance. Uh, in Photoshop 8k image uh, it's a 20 me megapixel image and we applied some blur and image scaling action uh, and the iMac took the lead again by about a minute um, and then after effects we rendered a one minute project out uh, now here we don't see a huge improvement with the quad core but there is a little bit of an improvement over the macbook pro Lastly, just a quick look at DaVinci and its playback. Uh, we took a ProRes LT file uh, in a 1080p timeline. Uh, all three couldn't achieve full frame rates at 25, but the iMac was closest at 23 frames. And then the Mac Mini was just uh, unbearable at 11 and 15 for the MacBook Pro. Uh, then we applied two TNR nodes and all three machines just couldn't cope with that kind of pressure. Okay, so there we have it. Um, I'll let you guys uh, pick the machine that you think is better suited, but the benchmarks are there for you to look at. Um, we're gonna do some more testing with the Mac Mini and an eGPU. So we're gonna connect up a GTX 970 four gigabyte and see how much that acceler helps accelerate the machine in uh, achieving those tasks that uh, we've just benchmarked. And um, that will be coming up soon. So uh, subscribe so you can get a notification when it's out. Uh, until then, thanks for watching. See ya.